Luke chapter 1 verses 57 through 66 tells this great story of the birth of John the Baptist and how his mom and dad named him. <clears throat> you can pause and reread that scripture again this morning if you want to. But you remember all of the people standing around said, what are we going to name him? Want to name him little Zeke or Ezekiel or something like that, Zechariah? And Mary said, no, I mean, Elizabeth said, no, we're going to name him John. And the people said, Zeke, what about that? And uh, he wrote on a tablet, his name is John. We talked about how this uh, is a word about obedience and how that Zechariah was not able to speak. You remember he had gone into the temple to do his work when God had given him the message that he was going to have a child. And he had doubted God. God took his ability to speak away from him up until this moment. And it wasn't until he carried his obedience all the way through and said, his name is John, that he was actually able to speak. There's another word about obedience here that I didn't want to pass over. And that is that there will always be obstacles and sometimes even people that stand in the way of us being obedient. In verse 61, it talks about the neighbor's the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, all of the family who had come together that day for the naming of the child and for the circumcision of the child. you got to remember, all of these people weren't in on what God was doing because Zechariah was not able to tell them what God had told him, and uh, Elizabeth had kept all of these things in her heart. And so they... Uh, Ask a question, what are we going to name him? And Mary said, we're going to name him John. And they go, no, 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 we can't do that. And they objected to it. What I want to point out is this. In your life, when you're trying to obey God, there will always be people around you who are not in on what God is doing. Now, little John the Baptist's mom and dad had a special word from God because they had been with God. But the neighbors hadn't. They had not had the same experience with God that Zechariah and Elizabeth has had. And so they were saying, let's name him little Zeke or name him after his daddy. And I, I love this line uh, in the Bible where uh, they said to Elizabeth, Elizabeth, we've never done it like this before. We've always named him after somebody in the family. I guess I like that because as a pastor, I always have, hearing people say, well, we've never done it that way before. We've never seen anything like this before. One of the things that happened in the Bible is uh, they turned to, to Zechariah and said, hey, you need to straighten her out. Tell her what we're going to name uh, this baby. She's come up with a crazy idea just because she thinks his baby looks like a John. She's going to name him John. And Zechariah being obedient just writes on the tablet, his name is John. Guys, there will always be an objection to overcome when you try to serve God. There will always be a group of people, whether you're a teenager and have friends who don't understand, or you're a business person uh, who has to work in an environment where others don't know God. There will always be a group of people who try to discourage you from obeying God, doing what God says. It doesn't really matter if God's asking you to do a new thing or an old thing in a new way. The question is, are we just really going to do what God tells us to do? That's the key. Zechariah was real nice about it, but he just simply said, his name is John, and he moved on. I love that verse in Mark chapter 2, verse 10, where Jesus came into a town, and a man had some kind of paralysis, and Jesus reached down and healed him. And the man picked up his pallet and walked away. And all the people standing around said, we've never seen it on this fashion before. Man, have I heard that before. You know, we, we get people all mixed up when we do something a different way. We sing a song a different way or maybe we teach a different way or we dress a different way. You know, God has a big family and we're all unique. And even though Jesus never changes, sometimes his ways change. Jesus taught in a revolutionary way. He told stories and parables when he taught, when everybody else had been sitting around just trying to parse verbs in the Old Testament. 
uh, Jesus shook people up by being spontaneous and true to himself. There'll always be people around us who question our motives and don't understand. Jesus never changes, but sometimes his methods do. I had a lady stand up in church one time when we were wanting to buy a sign and put it out in front of the church, and she objected to spending money on a sign. So she stood up and she said in a very angry tone, Jesus didn't have any signs. And I calmly looked at her and said, you know, Jesus didn't have air conditioning either. Are you wanting us to turn ours off? Sometimes the methods change, but the message never changes. We've got to decide who we're going to obey in life. I read a story one time about an old preacher that was driving down the road in his car. It was an old country road. And there was this young fellow sitting up in the seat beside him who objected to God and who objected to all the things God was trying to tell him to do. And so uh, this young boy looked at the old preacher and said, Preacher, there's too many thy shouts in the Bible. There's too many thy shout nots in the Bible. It just makes my life too restrictive. Nobody wants to be around somebody who is always telling them what to do. Why is God always trying to tell me what to do? The old preacher was pretty smart and pretty experienced. He didn't say a thing. He just kept driving down the road. He got to a corner, slowed down a little bit, and he passed a sign. And he just suddenly, with a little smile on his face, turned left and started heading down another road. After driving for a mile or two, the young passenger said, Hey, preacher, we're on the wrong road. Didn't you see that sign back there? We passed a sign back there that said, If you want to get to town, you needed to go the other way. Why didn't you go the other way? And the old preacher just looked at him and smiled and said, You know, I don't like signs that tell me what to do. They're a little too restrictive for me. This looked like a better road, and I just decided to go down this road. The young guy sitting in the car said, Okay, preacher, I get your point. Sometimes it's best to learn to decide who we're going to follow in life. Popular opinion, the latest census poll, what comes out in People magazine, the new survey. Are we going to follow the directions given to us by God? Each day we have to decide who we're going to be. A young man went into the army and on his first day, an older soldier came up to him and said, Son, let me give some good advice. When you're given orders, Follow those orders. Do exactly what they say. The young soldier said to the old soldier, what if I get an order that contradicts uh, an order from one person and another order from another person and they contradict each other? And the older soldier said, well, number one, that's not going to happen because if you're taking your orders from the right people that have authority to give orders, they won't contradict. But if you ever give an get an order or two orders that seem to contradict, here's what you do. You follow the order of the superior officer. Sometimes in our world we get into situations where everybody has an opinion about what we ought to do. The crowd say this, our friends will say that, our family will say this. What are we going to do? We need to decide that we're going to follow the orders of the superior officer. Nobody knows more. Nobody's smarter. Nobody understands what we need more, more than the Lord Jesus. We will never go wrong by following God's orders. You will never go wrong by living life God's way. Today, let's determine to listen to him and obey him, regardless of who might object to what he says and what we do.